So I have this Eco Smart bulb here. It's actually from my parents' house. They're using LED bulbs now for, I don't know, about a year. I think this one's been in use for six months and it has quit. Really the first LED bulb that I know of that has quit. Well, let's see what's going on here. I have my kilowatt meter hooked up. I'll screw this bulb in. And nobody's home. Oh, well, wait a minute. It's drawing a small amount of current and it's uh, giving us 0.3 watts of consumption. So somebody's home in there, just not getting any light. Well, let's tear this thing down and see what happened. Okay, I have the LED bulb in pieces now. And let me tell you, this thing was really sealed well. It took a lot of prying to get that globe off. But once I got it open, it tore down pretty easy. It's actually a pretty nice design. There are no wires. It has this plug and socket system. So when it's assembled, it just slides down in there and connects. And the LED board plugs right onto this, like so. And when I was beating on it, the choke came loose. Kind of a little disappointed in that part of it. Now it should have been glued down. This has a little bit of mass to it and if the bulb is dropped or something it's going to break these solder joints and that's what happened. You know there's no adhesive or anything and this thing like Dave says on EEV blog is kind of just flapping in the breeze and so it's got that torsion that just pulls it off. And, well, hitting it is kind of an extreme case, but it did snap it apart. Well, this is a, um, a high power factor type bulb. You notice there is no filter capacitor on the input. And it's kind of a, like a reverse switch mode. On the mains sine wave input, it actually draws it in small little slivers kind of like a high frequency switch mode supply and that's how it's able to get that nice power factor because it's drawing from all parts of the sine wave instead of just the top which a uh, normal full wave bridge type arrangement would do with a large filter capacitor well any filter capacitor really it does have a filter capacitor but this is on the output just have some smaller film capacitors, a fusible resistor, a couple chokes, you know, that helps smooth out the noise, you know, block some of the switching noise from getting back into the line. It's a fairly complex design. Here's the main chip. Probably a switching MOSFET and the, uh, the flyback diode here. I'm kind of wondering if this still works. You know, even without the choke, it still can produce a, you know, the switch mode output signal. You know, it's a, looking at these LEDs, there's uh, two actual die inside each one. So it is a buck type uh, switch mode supply. And I'm kind of wondering if it still operates. I don't really want to hook my scope up to this, you know, mains operated device, but I'll see if it puts anything out, any kind of uh, radio interference out. Hooked up the mains to it through a bulb limiter. I have the radio here. Oh, good. see what that is. Nope, that's that's from something else. Yeah, this thing is just dead.
need one of those isolated probes for my scope. They're pretty expensive though. Well, I have my uh, meter here hooked up. It's not turned on. I'm just shunting through the 10 amp section. And you see as I short across the mains, you can see the reflection of the light as the bulb limiter comes on. And short across the AC side of the full wave bridge is dead. Let's see. That's the mains. That's the fusible link is still good. And then there's this tiny surface mount resistor. That's good. See, I'm just not getting anything on that side of it. I'm going to check this capacitor. I'm willing to bet that that's good and the LEDs themselves are good. Well, here's what I found. This choke, you know, this coil here, is across this resistor and it's open. Apparently when that happened, you know, these are in parallel, so the resistor took the current and it burned up. The bridge rectifier measures good. This measure, this transistor measures out to be a MOSFET because I'm getting the isolated gate and the reverse body diode shows up. This is open circuit one way and 0.4 volts the other way, so it appears to be a Schottky diode. And, and I'm not, not going to waste my time measuring all this other stuff. It could be the, the chip shorted out or something and drew extra current. I don't know. It's one of those mystery things. You can only guess. This capacitor measures good. It's one of these Aishi capacitors. These guys must own the lighting business. I, they seem to have this brand of capacitor in about every CFL I've ever torn apart. And then a lot of LED bulbs as well. You can see there it's 130 degrees Celsius, extra high temperature, and it measures perfect. They're pretty good capacitors, actually. I've never found a bad one in a CFL or anything that, you know, had a normal life and just, you know, died of old age. The capacitor still measures good. The last thing I did here was with this 15 watt bulb limiter. I hooked up a diode bridge and I hooked it up to the LED panel. Now there's 10 LEDs and they have two die in each one so that's 20 forward voltage per die is 3 volts so that's 60 volts. So you know a 15 watt, oops, 15 watt bulb at operating at 120 volts you know, 12 watts would be 100 milliamps, so this is a little bit more. So I just wanted to see if the LEDs were good. And let me turn on the, let me screw in the bulb. And totally blown out white light. That is working just fine. So yeah, the LEDs are just fine. You can see by eye that they're all lit up. And a lot of people say that LEDs cannot take the heat, but actually they can. For example, this Cree CXA1304 chip on board LED, the case temperature, not the junction temperature, but the case temperature specified at 105C at a certain current, I think like 400 milliamps, it will last for 40,000 hours. So LEDs, good quality ones at least, can take the heat. What kills LED bulbs is usually these driver boards cannot handle the heat and they'll fail early. And you know it could have been a heat related death or something else, probably heat related, but 
Well, just wanted to do an autopsy on the LED lamp and see what the problem was. Didn't mean for this to be so long, but hey, thanks for watching.